If you need to update your deck, go to 50cards.shop. Get 5% off your next purchase when you use code NEXUS. Hey everybody, welcome back to another deck profile. I'm Richard and today we're doing Liberators. Yay! Uh, so this is my premium Liberator deck focusing around the Holy Shine Ultima combo. So it's just kind of like going straight for the kill, kind of a glass cannon deck, but it's uh, something different than Ezel and Gurgit. So I just wanted to show off my build for this deck. So. Without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump right into the main deck, starting off with our starter, which is Spring Breeze Messenger. Just like all the other V starters, it's when you wrote upon, you draw a card, and then if your opponent's at grade one, you get a quick shield. That's part of the errata with all these cards. Um, so get your quick shield and premium, which is helpful. And, you know, it's my choice of starter because aesthetically it fits the, uh, the blue and gold, which is kind of like what's going on with a lot of the artwork in the main deck, so I chose Spring Breeze for the starter. On to the grade three, starting off, we got our four copies of Holy Shine Dragon. So what Holy Shine Dragon does is when it's placed by riding onto a unit with Liberator in its name, you kind of bust one, search your deck for a grade three with Liberator, different from this card, from your deck, you ride it. Then if you have four more cards in your damage zone, look at top five, call two, uh, shuffle your deck, and the second skill is at the end of the, your turn, if this is in the soul, if you have four more damage, you can put this back into your hand. So the main point about this card is obviously your go-to right is Percival, because Percival gives you another Excel marker, so you ride this, get an Excel marker, use the skill, ride a new grade three, get an Excel marker, Percival's skill gives you a third Excel marker for a Count of Blast 2. Uh, this part where you have four damage and you look at top four to call something that does help because that's during your ride phase Which means you're doing all of this before you stride so you got a little board set up and the soul skill also really helps because uh, With Ultima's cost you need to have discard a card with the same name as your Vanguard So if you have two of these in the soul You can just put both of them back into your hand and then you immediately have the cost for Ultima ready to go so I do like that about the card a lot. And then also, if you have another Percival in hand, you can just ride Holy Shine, search Percival, ride it, and then discard Percival for Ultima. So there's a lot of synergy going on with that as well. So we're running definitely for Holy Shine. And then for our other grade three, four copies of Bluish Flame Liberator Percival. So this is your other Liberator target. The first skill is Continuous Van. Uh, all your units on additional rears get 5k, so everything on an Excel marker. The second skill is when placed, van or rear, if your vanguard's grade three or greater, counterblast one, discard a card from your hand, get an imaginary gift to Excel, search your deck or drop zone for Aglaveil, call it, and if you search your deck, you shuffle, and you can only use the ability of Percival once per turn. So you can't, you know, write it and then call it and do it again. So. Percival is just the obvious ride target because it gives you a bunch of Excel markers and uh, it also works on rear guard circles. So even if you um, don't, you know, end up using Percival's skill because you don't have the counter blast and you counter charge later, call Percival later, you can do the skill, which is nice on the rear. Yeah, love this card. Percival is uh, my favorite card in, in Vanguard in general. So I'm just kind of glad that I can run a deck where he's kind of like the boss unit, so to speak. So definitely running for Percival as well. Now we are moving on to grade twos. So we're only running eight grade threes, which feels a little odd for a gold paladin Excel deck, but here we are. So I'm doing four copies of Oath Liberator Aglavale. So this is the search target for Percival, AKA the Legion Mate. So when placed on Van, you kind of blast one, look at the top three cards of your deck, call one, the rest goes to bottom. The rear guard skills when it attacks, you can put a rear guard into your soul. This gets 10k and at the end of the battle this bounces to your hand so it's a good beat stick it's a search target has a great on ride skill so it's like your go-to ride a go-to beat stick helps you feel soul gives you cards back in your hand and it's searchable by percival in the drop zone and the deck so four of and it's a liberator so when you ride holy shine on top of it you know you can activate the skill speaking of liberators someone decided to make a comeback from 20 13 basically um it's blaster blade liberator from the break right era so blaster blade liberator was from trial deck 08 from the original series uh its skill is counter blast 2 when placed on van or rear if you have a vanguard or liberator you can choose one of your opponent's rear guards in the front row and retire it 
Um, we don't really run it for the skill. We run it for the name, the full name, Blaster Blade Liberator. And we run it for the fact that it's also a grade two that's Liberator. So when you write Holy Shine on top of it, you can use the skill. So why are we running Blaster Blade Liberator as opposed to any other grade two Liberators? Because we are running Star Rain Trumpeter. So we're running four copies of Star Rain Trumpeter as well. So Star Rain is direct synergy with Blaster Blade. Skill is choose a card named Blast Blade Liberator from your drop zone or soul. So if you wrote this or shoved it into soul by Aglavale, uh, and you put it on top of your deck, you shuffle your deck and then look at the top card of your deck and search for up to one gold paladin and call it. And then you put the rest in your bottom. So you can look at the top and then call it and it helps you fill your board, which is nice. And if you really don't want to call a card, you can just put it on the bottom of your deck. Um, but it also just helps you put the Blaster Blades back in deck, which is nice. But we're running four copies because it's also a Liberator, so it has a name, and it uh, reuses your Blaster Blades, and it also, you know, has some free calling, which helps you kind of not really worry about using too many Counter Blasts to fill your board right from the get-go. So that is it for our Liberator Grade 2s. On to our techs. I am running one copy of Arthen. So what Arthur does is he's a D-series card. Front row, all your rear guards with different card names from this unit cannot be chosen by your opponent's card effects. So it gives everything else essentially resist except for itself, so they have to target this. So it's a good protection card. Uh, you don't Persona Ride, so the second skill doesn't really do anything for you, but you mostly run it as the one of so that if it's on the board and you're going into your Ultima turn, your opponent can only target this unit. So they can't like target your big columns just to like, you know, wipe out your uh, your big attack. So it, it is a helpful search target. Speaking of helpful search target, we're still running the one Providential Angel because it's just it's just that good. Uh, if your hand has one or less cards, you counter blast one. Uh, till the end of the turn, your opponent can only call a total of one Sentinel from their hand, and this gets 10k. So it means for the turn, your opponent can only PG once, and then they're gonna PG your Vanguard when you go into Ultima. So it just makes it harder to deal with those other columns. So Providential is definitely in there as like a little tech for when you search. Uh, you don't wanna ride these two, obviously, because they don't have Liberator in their name, but they're great rearguard cards. So that was it for the grade twos. Now we're moving on to the grade ones. We are going with a classic Blister of Truth, Dendrain, and I'm running Dendrain instead of Josephus uh, because we do call cards from outside of just the deck. We do call from hand as well. So what Dendrain does is when it's placed by a card ability, Soul Blast 1, you can either draw a card or counter charge and get 3k. So a lot of times I find myself using the counter charge just so I can get uh, resources back for Percival, Holy Shine, Ultima, Spear Cross, there's a lot of cards that use a lot of Counter Blast in this deck, so Dindrain helps with that. So the reason I'm running this instead of Josephus, because even though Josephus is like kind of an upgrade of Dindrain, except Josephus only works when called from the deck. Um, we do have G units that call from hand, so I want to be able to make sure that if I do draw Josephus, it's not just a dead card. At least Dindrain, you know, has more versatility, at least in premium. Next up for Grade Ones, another super, super old card. White Rainbow Liberator Balan. Uh, for some of you players that weren't around during the OG uh, Vanguard era, pre-G, um, you might be familiar with Balan from Vanguard Zero, except the skill in Zero is a little different. Uh, its actual skill in real life is when your Blast Play Liberator is placed on rear, if you have a Vanguard Liberator in its name, choose a card from damage zone, turn it face up. So it does not have to be the same column. It, it's just if it's on the board and you call the Blaster Blade somewhere, you counter charge. So if you have two Balans and you play a Blaster Blade, you unflip two. If you have two Balans and you play two Blaster Blades, you unflip four. So it gets pretty nutty with how much counter charge you can do if you get enough Balans out and you play a Blaster Blade. So another reason that's why we're running the Blaster Blade Liberator is because there's a lot of synergy with all these old cards to help you make free field. Get all your counter charge back since the deck is a little bit counter blast heavy. So that's why we're kind of focusing around these old Liberator cards. All right, then for grade ones, I am running two copies of Gorbaduck. This is our grade three searcher. So it gets 5k if you call two units. 
And then when it's played from hand, you look at the top five, search for a grade three, put in your hand, and uh, shuffle your deck. If you put something in your hand, you have to discard a card. So the only reason I'm only running two is because Holy Shine searches grade threes out of the deck for you. So there comes times when you're using Gorbaduck and you're doing your search and you're not really finding what you're looking for, but it's still a really helpful card because it can help you search Holy Shine for when you need to ride it. And then also helps you find your heal guardians um, for you know your G guardian fodder. So Gorbaduck is great. If you want to tone down the Dindrains to like three and you want to put Gorbaduck up to three, you could do that as well. Um, I do like the Gorbaduck at the two though. It does work. Or alternatively, you could substitute Gorbaduck out, uh, substitute Reedy out for another Gorbaduck, but I like Reedy a lot. So what Reedy does is it's Act, Soul Blast 2. Until the end of turn, you increase the trigger power of your triggers by another 5k. So with all the soul charging that you're doing in the deck with um, Aglavale and also um, with the fact that you keep rewriting your grade threes with Holy Shine onto Percival, Holy Shine onto Percival, you have a decent amount of soul. So you could Soul Blast four, increase your triggers by 10K, and then your ultimate turns just get even more wacky. Uh, even in Anaheim, I use Reedy just kind of on a whim, just to be like, oh, like maybe this, I'll get one trigger and a 20k trigger might help me out, might as well. And I ended up triple triggering. So all my triggers had 25k or 20 or 30k on them. So that was a little insane, not gonna lie. So Reedy is I, I, Reedy's sticking around for that reason alone in my deck. So I really like Reedy a lot. Um, but like I said, if you're kind of iffy about this card, you can just add another Gorbaduck. It works out just fine. And that's it for grade ones. We're now moving on to our triggers. I'm gonna start off with the crits. We are not running OTs because we are playing Ultima. So we're doing the four Theodora. This is the crit that's GB1. Um, when your Vanguard attacks, you can just put this in the soul and give your Vanguard an extra 10K. So this is also great because if you search this out from the deck or you call it from Trumpeter um, or even just play it from your hand, it's, it's a plus one because you're moving in the soul you're drawing your card, so you're filling your hand back up. You have Soul, which is resources for Reedy and um, resource for Spear Cross and other cards that Soul Blast in Drain. So definitely want to run for the Theodora. And then we're running four copies of the Stride Fodder Crit, which is Gold Garnish Lion. So what this one does is if this is in your hand, when you pay the cost for Stride, it can be discarded as a grade three. So it gives you Stride Fodder. Uh, this also does come in handy a lot because sometimes you want to keep the great threes to ride the next turn or you want to call your Percival for its skill. Whatever the scenario might be, um, wanting to discard the Strike Fodder might come in handy. All right, then we're also running four Halo Shield Mark. So this is our PG. So Mark's skill is just your traditional perfect guard. It's when it's placed on the Guardian Circle. Uh, you discard a card from your hand, choose one of units, and it cannot be hit till the end of the battle. So what I really like about Mark is it can be searched out by a G Guardian. So if you go into Slamy Flare, call this to the Guardian Circle, it activates, you just got a PG. Um, so it's a searchable PG, that's why you want to run Mark. It's also a draw trigger, draw triggers are great. Um, classic trigger lineup, eight crit, four draw. And speaking of triggers, classic trigger lineup, we need our four heals. So I'm running four of the Heal Guardian, Clarity Wing Dragon. You're pretty much always gonna be running your Heal Guardians in premium. They're just so good. It's a grade three. Um, it also has a skill that you know helps you out while you're still on grade two. And they're searchable by your grade three searchers. When this is placed on the Guardian from hand, if you did not arrive, if you did not ride a grade three during this fight, you can perform one of the following. You can either give your Vanguard 10K for the turn or choose one of your opponent's units and it gets minus two crit until the end of the battle. It also has the skill that when it's placed on rear from hand, if you have no damage, you can just put the top card of your deck face up into your damage zone. So, you know, just helping you get a counter blast in case your opponent wants to damage deny you. So heal guardians are great in premium. Definitely run them. Please acquire them if you can. Uh, it's gonna help you in the long run. So that was it for our main deck. We're now moving on to the fun stuff, which is the G zone. Starting off with a classic Gold Paladin G unit. I'm only running three copies of Gurga Helios. So what Gurga Helios does is act, unite, choose a face down card with the same name as this unit, and turn it face up. It gets 
<clears throat> excuse me, drive plus one, so quad drive. Second skill, GB3, it gets 5k for each year of your rear guards, and your opponent cannot, cannot call grade one or greater cards from guard uh, when this attacks. So, I mean, granted, PGs are grade zeros now, so not as big of a deal now, but the extra power can come in handy. It's mostly for the quad drive. If you just want to go into a turn, we have, you know, four drive checks, and you have Reedy on the board, you know, it helps out. But we're mostly running the three because it's flip fodder. There, I said it. So you flip one when you stride, and then for your second stride, maybe you'll go into Helios and flip Helios the second time. But a lot of times it's just quite literally, I go flip, flip, flip for the Helios. And the reason for that is we are running two copies of Heavenly Law Gurgit. So I like Heavenly Law Gurgit a lot more than Glorious Raining, but I'm just gonna go ahead and read his skill. It's act, kind of plus one, choose a face down card the same name as this unit, turn it face up. And this unit gets until the end of turn, unite when it attacks, you look at the top seven cards from your deck, call one, shuffle your deck. And the second skill is all your units get plus 2k for each face up card with Gurgit in its name in your G zone. So you flipping these face up, it counts towards the skill for Heavenly Law. So at least if you're gonna flip something, at least flip something that kind of helps you in the long run. Uh, you also do have to discard. I didn't mention that for this skill. You can blast one and you get, you have to discard a card as well. So this is mostly if you just want to kind of have your front row with a little bit bigger numbers. This is on swing, check top seven. So maybe you check top seven, find a trumpeter. Your trumpeter helps you find another unit to call an attack with. Helping you with multi-attacks. It's a very situational card, but that's what's nice about the G zone is that you, you can splash in cards for situations. All right, next up, running two copies of Spear Cross Dragon. Uh, Spear Cross is just a great card. Uh, it is Act G Zone Unite. If your current Vanguard is grade three, Counter Blast two, discard a card from your hand, stride this. What's nice about this is even if your opponent's at grade two and they're trying to deny you stride, you can just use that first skill and just stride anyways. And it's Counter Blast two, so it's kind of heavy, but we have a lot of counter charge in this deck, so we kind of make up for it. Second skill, act, once per turn, soul blast one, turn a card from your G zone face up. Look at top five, call two, shuffle the, shuffle the deck. So it just makes you bored. So I'm running two because I like to go into the first one, obviously while my opponent's at grade two and I'm striding on them. And I do like to go into the second one just in case I wanna build a board. Uh, a lot of these units don't really help you build a board from nothing. So if there, if I'm in a situation where I need to have rear guards and my hands kind of whatever, the second spear cross does come in handy to at least, you know, fill up my, you know, field in those weird scenarios. And then one of my favorite G units, uh, Brandon Dragon. This thing was really lackluster when I first read it. And in practice, this thing is amazing. It's one of the best G units I think Gold Paladin has had. So its skill is when it attacks, you put two of your rear guards to the bottom of your deck, and then you turn a G unit face up. You draw two cards, and then you call up to two from your hand to rear. If you call two, this gets a crit. So what I like about this card is that you can put two of your rear guards back, including like you can just throw down a trigger and have a trigger back in your deck, draw two, and then you may choose to call them. So you could just draw two and then triple drive. That's five cards in your hand. So if you're in a weird spot, Brambin will help you out. And also if you need to push for damage, this gets a crit. So when you're calling more things, you're swinging at them, they're probably gonna guard it or they're gonna take it, pushing them further up in the damage. And this also helps you proc off Dindrain, which is why I'm running Dindrain instead of uh, Nocephus, because at least with Bram and Dragon, you can proc off Dindrain's skill. So I am running two of those because sometimes I'm in scenarios where I first try Brambin and I'm like, you know what? I might as well just do that again. And I just tried Brambin again. So. What's nice is they can flip anything. So between them, they're either flipping Helios or they're flipping each other. So it all works out. And next up for the G zone, one copy of Advarius. Advarius' skill is when this unit attacks, you kind of lost one, put all of your rest and rearguards to the bottom of your deck. Choose out two cards from your hand, call them. And if you had put four cards from, from your field to your deck, you can stand this unit with drive minus two. So this is really more if you're trying to push for game and your opponent's at five damage. Um, that way, you know, cause you need to have two cards in hand ready to go. It's not like Brambit where it lets you draw two, then call two. 
So that's where this, that's why I only run it at the one. Uh, it also has the continuous ability, all regards placed by a card ability get 5k, and that can come in handy with um, Percival activating or Trumpeter activating, whatever calls, whatever you call gets an extra 5k, it might help. Uh, but it's mostly just to kind of swing a bunch and get a bunch of attacks and finish the game that way if your opponent's at five and you can't Ultima them for whatever reason. And speaking of Ultima, there he is. The one copy of Zeroth Dragon of Zenith Peak Ultima. Nine times out of 10, you're gonna finish the game with this card. So what this does is Ultimate Stride, uh, to pay the cost, you have to discard a card with the same name as your Vanguard from your hand. And then you also have to have three cards face up in your G zone, which is really easy to do because you just, you know, stride and then G guard, or you just G guard three times or two times if you have a lease. So there's a really easy way to, to get this effect off. Counterblast two, when it's placed on van, you can pay the cost, search for four cards. Two get called to the field, two go on top of your deck, and until the end of the turn, all of your units receive your trigger effects. So you pick two normal units, two crits, the crits go on the top of your deck, your field is getting plus 20k uh, for the turn, which is nice. And then if you have Reedy, they get plus 25, plus 30, depending on how much soul you spend. So that's nice. And also, like I said, it lets you search with the first two cards. You can search a Providential Angel, a Dindrain, a Reedy, a whatever it is that you need for that turn, you're searching it out. It's mostly Providential Angel though. So this is your win con. And like I said, because you're searching two crits, you have all those Excel markers on your board. So you have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven attacks. All seven of them are gonna have three crit plus 20K on top of them. So if your opponent's at three damage, any of those attacks that they take, they should die. So, you know, in theory. <laughs> so the, the deck is very Ultima focused. So, but it's, it's a lot of fun. So that was it for the G units. Now we're moving on to G Guardians, starting off with a classic, Slammy Flare. So what Slammy Flare does is when it's placed on the guard, you can choose one of your rear guards, put it on the bottom of your deck, look at the top five, call, choose two cards with different grades, call them the Guardian Circle. So this helps you search out your marks. So, you know, and also it's just the fact that triggers have 15K, grade ones have 10K. So this card got a, a really good buff thanks to V-Series cards. So Slammy Flare is sticking around for quite a while, I would have to say. And then I'm running two copies of the new G Guardian from the from the most recent premium collection. I love this card. I go on this card like most of the time for my G Guard cost. It's when it's placed on Guard Circle, Soul Blast 1, look at the top two, choose up to two cards from among them, call them the Guardian Circle, discard the rest. So the rest will just go to your drop zone. So you might as well just call it to the Guardian Circle anyways. Um, if you called one or more grade one or greater cards, you draw a card. So if you get two triggers, great. You have plenty of shield. If you get a grade one or a grade three, you know, we're, you know, obviously a grade two as well. I won't leave those out. Um, you get a draw. So you're not really losing anything after you discard your heal guardian. You call this, maybe you draw into another heal guardian, then you can pay another G guard cost. So this card is just great. And for a soul blast one in a deck that builds up so much soul, it's it might as well be free. <laughs> and lastly, True Liberator of Healing, Elise, the one of. Elise's skill is GB1 when placed on guard, counterblast one, flip a G guardian from your G zone face up, look at top two, call one, the other goes to bottom. Uh, and it also gets the skill of if the attack does not hit, you can move this unit to a rear guard circle. So the unit you called would get that effect. Um, and you know you put put a card from among them at the bottom of your deck. So you're picking one. If it succeeds, you get to call a unit. But we're not. We're really doing it more for the fact where you want a G guard, and then let's say you have another heal guardian. You G guard again. Flip a, a G guardian face up. Now you have three G units face up in your G zone. You can first stride Ultima. So that's just kind of one of the things that I want to be able to do. So that's why we're running the one copy of Elise. All right, that was it for the that was it for the deck. That was everything. We got our our Excel two markers. This is an Excel two deck. You're pretty much never going to go into anything else because Excel two 
is uh, is just that much better than Excel 1, unless you're playing Great Nature, where you just draw a bunch of your hand anyways. So we're pretty much only playing Excel 2 markers. And uh, don't forget your Quick Shield, because that's, uh, you know, part of the reason why you have your starters, so that you can get this card. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. That was the Liberator deck profile. I would like to say that as fun as this deck is, this has a horrible, and when I mean horrible, I mean like down horrendous matchup against Eradicators. If you have a friend that plays Eradicators, I really do not recommend you building this deck. Uh, you will lose every single time. <laughs> uh, so it's kind of sad that we're in a meta dominated by Eradicators and Holy Shine can't uh, shine, pun intended, uh, you know, to show off how well it can do. So, um, that's all I can really say for the most part. It's a really fun deck. I did have a lot of fun with this deck in Anaheim. Like I said, I did lose to Eradicators, um, but in that matchup, the only thing I can say is you're not gonna be using your grade three effects. So it's just kind of like you ride and then that's it. You just get your one Excel marker. You kind of just go with the flow. You kind of do your simple stride. And then the next turn after that, if you survive, you want to go full combo, Holy Shine into Percival and then Stride. You you want to do the whole thing. You want to try and be able to Ultima that next turn. But it's a very big if because Eradicators are just that good of a deck. So you kind of have to play slow against them and then just kind of go for the OTK, so to speak. All right, that was my little banter on the Eradicator matchup since Eradicators at this moment as a my recording are still pretty busted in premium, um, fair and balanced game. Uh, I don't think they need anything banned. I do think things being limited or maybe choice restricted. I don't really know what exactly, but I feel like if you ban Stunverse, you kind of kill the whole clan. So I don't think that's healthy um, because there's definitely other Narukami decks other than just Eradicators. And I don't think they should, you know, be the ones to suffer because of, <laughs> because of Eradicators being that good. So, yeah, that's all I really got to say. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.